All right, in this video, we are going to be reviewing chapter 11 about probability and statistics and getting ready for the final exam. So here's kind of some of the concepts you, you want to focus on. Um, obviously, I'll cover them in this video and in the assignment. So um, as always, have a pencil paper and try the questions before watching solutions. Okay. So uh, a lot of these, you can kind of just do what makes sense. So, you know, there are some formulas and things you can try to remember, but for a lot of probability, I just try to reason through and see what makes sense. So pause the video and, and give this a shot. Okay, so what happens on this is you, like if you think first, you're, there's five different car types. So maybe we have like Honda, Toyota, Ford, Chevy, and Volkswagen, all right? Let's say those are your choices. So from there, uh, you have seven colors. So for each one of these, you have seven different colors to pick from, right? And then same thing here, seven. And then from there, you have, from this spot, you have three different trim levels to pick, okay? So what happens is you end up having five choices initially, and from each of those choices, you have seven choices. And from each one of those branches, you have three choices each from the branch. So you just got to multiply all those together. And so you're going to get, uh, let's see, that's 105, I believe, is the right answer. So you have 105 different possibilities. So that's called the counting principle. And one of the tricks is you have multiple categories. You're picking one of each from three separate categories here. So your choice is here times your choice is here times your choice is here, 105. Okay, Papa John's pizza. So you're making a three topping pizza. How many different pizzas could you, uh, are possible? Okay, so the trick on this is you got to count up. There's 18 total toppings, and you're going to pick three of them. So this is the one where there's like 18, and you pick three. Okay, and you just got to figure out, is it combinations or permutations? And so just a quick review of that is... Um, Combinations is the order does not matter. Okay, that's how you can tell it's a combinations question. And for permutations, the order matters. So I kind of ran out of space here, but maybe I can put it down here that permutations order matters. Okay, so here um, we just got to figure out which it is. So for me, I'm just going to think of like my favorite three topping pizza, which would be pepperoni, sausage, and tomatoes, wherever the heck tomatoes are. Okay. And so it really doesn't matter if my pizza, when I order it, if I say tomatoes, pepperoni, sausage, or if I say it in a different order, sausage, pepperoni, tomatoes, it's still the same pizza. Okay. So that's going to make it a combinations question because the order does not matter. So it's just 18 C3 on your calculator. And so if you need help doing this, um, you're going to type the 18 first, and then it's under math, and go over to probability. And you can see there's permutations, combinations, and then factorial if you ever need that. So I'm going to use combinations, three. And so there's 816 possible three-topping pizzas from Papa John's. Okay, so this is actually one of my favorite question. So I'm going to mix it up and say then, let's say you, you're going to get one where you're going to get one veggie and one meat. So how many different pizza choices are there then? Okay. And you, you, yeah, so hopefully you had a chance to think through this, but uh, what happens here is you are picking two toppings. So it's tempting to think it's like 18 C2 or something, but you are, you're separating them by categories. You're picking one out of the veggies and one out of the meat cheeses. Okay, so now it becomes counting principle because you have two categories and you're going to pick one each. So when I pick my veggie, I have eight choices. And after I pick a veggie, for each veggie I pick, then there would be 10 choices over here. So you just do eight choices in the first category times 10 choices in the second category. And there's 80 total pizzas where it's one veggie, one meat cheese. So it kind of switches because you have multiple categories. So it's no longer permutations or combinations. All right, next up, uh, this is speed walking. This is a real thing. Like why they don't just run, I don't know. But they have Olympic speed walking, at least last time I checked. And so we have 12 athletes in our final, and they're going to be competing for the gold medal. So how many ways can 
to assign gold, silver, and bronze out of these 14 athletes. Pause the video. Okay, so this is one category, just Olympic walkers, and we're picking three out of the 12, so it's 12 something three, and then the order would matter here, because whoever gets first is gonna get gold, and so it's, if, if it's Johnny, Billy, Sally, then Sally, Johnny, Billy will be different, because whoever comes in first gets the gold. So the order matters, so it's 12 P3, so 12 math, probability, permutations three. Okay, so there's uh, 1,320. You can also do, for first place, you can think of it this way. For first place, there's 12 possibilities. For second place, then there'd be 11. And for third place, there'd be 10. And if you multiply all those together, 12 times 11 times 10, you would also get that number. So that's kind of an alternate way to think of this one. But either way, you should get that uh, 1,320 as your answer. All right. I love chocolate chip cookies. So this one you are running in the kitchen and you only have time to randomly grab one because your mom's going to get mad because you're eating a cookie. So what is the probability you get a sugar cookie or an oatmeal raisin? Okay, so again, pause the video, try it. Your solution here to me, again, this is just kind of common sense. So how many cookies are there total? So if we add them all up, 3 and 7 is 10 plus eight more is 15, plus five more is 23. So we got 23 cookies. So how many are sugar or oatmeal raisin? So there's, here's five oatmeal raisin, here's seven sugar. So altogether that's 12. So the chances you get a sugar or an oatmeal raisin is 12 out of 23 cookies. All right, more probability, we're gonna spin this thing. And remember probability is just the favorable out of the total. So like on the last one, favorable was a sugar or oatmeal raisin, and total was 23 cookies. That's how you do a probability. Okay, so pause the video, give this a shot. All right, so for white space, there are eight of them. No, sorry, there's eight total spaces, and out of those eight, four are white. Right, one, two, three, four. So your chances of getting a white space is one half, which you can kind of see visually. Right, we have 50-50 chance of hitting the white space. Okay, so getting an even number twice. So this is actually, I want to get even and another even. Okay, so what we're going to do here on an and uh, on an and question, you multiply. So for even, um, there's one half that are even, right? Two, four, six, and eight. And then uh, we're going to multiply that half times half. So your chances of getting two evens, like oh, even twice in a row, is just one out of four. For each one, it's individually one half, but then multiply them together, and you have a one-fourth overall chance of getting an even number twice. And that's called theoretical probability, because that's what should happen in theory. In practice, you could spin it a bunch of times, and maybe you get in two evens in a row, like one-third of the time or something, but this is just what should happen in theory. Okay, so a couple or and ones. And again, I encourage you to kind of just do what makes sense here. I know that's weird directions, but pause the video, give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to be white or greater than six. So I know I have to eight total possibilities. And then out of those eight, I'm just going to count how many are white or greater than six. So here's the white ones. And circle those ones. And then greater than six would be seven and eight. Okay, and so I counted eight twice, so I don't really need to count it twice. So I'm just going to count there is four um, uh, white ones and then two that are greater than eight, but I'm not going to count the eight again because I already counted it. So really there's four plus one more five. So there's five out of eight that, or, uh, that are white or greater than six. So that's it. Okay, and then an and, again, just, just do what makes sense, right? There's eight total things here. So we have to be white and greater than six. So if you look, this one's not white or greater than six and greater than six. This one's not white and greater than six, right? None of these are greater than six. So these aren't going to be good. And then this one's not, this one's greater than six, but it's not white. And then this is the only one that's both white and greater than six. So it's just one out of eight chance you get a white or greater than six. So I would just, I would go through and, and do what makes sense. I know that's weird directions, but I think 
if you trust your intuition on these, um, it should guide you pretty well. Okay, so an and one. So basically, um, an and is you just multiply, right? So if, if it's this and this, you multiply these together and you're going to get something less than what we started with, right? Because if you have to have two things happen, that's going to be less than one of them happening individually. So just multiply these together and the chances that they both happen are 21%. Okay, so we want to find the chance that um, someone plays football or soccer. And in Wisconsin, they're both played in the fall uh, for males, but you, you can't play both. And I know in Minnesota you play both, but here you can't. So basically, um, if you want to find the chances to play football or soccer, you just add all the football people together, which is 23% of the kids, plus all the soccer people, which is 15%, right? And since they don't overlap, right, none of the kids that are in this 23% are also in the 15%. So the overall chance is just add those two percentages together, and you have a 38% chance that they're a soccer player or a football player. So just add them together. Right? Generally, on an or, you have to subtract off if there's any overlap, but here there's no overlap, so it's just a 38%. Again, I, if you do what makes sense, then I think you get, get that answer. Okay. So again, I would just, just do what makes sense. So pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so a probability, again, is just favorable out of total so there's 20 total pizzas and we want one that is either thin crust or sausage so i'm just going to go through and say okay these first five they count because they have thin crust this next one uh they don't count because they don't have thin crust and they're not sausage next one are sausage so they count this last one are also sausage so they count right and then just add all those up so that's uh, 12 total. So your probability of thin or sausage is 12 out of 20, or 6 out of 10, or 3 out of 5. So you have a 60% chance, looks like, of getting a sausage or thin crust pizza. Okay, last one. These are generally, I think, some of the harder ones, um, but these are these given that one. So you have what's called a two-way table, all right? And um, probability that they like Star Wars given that they like Titanic. So it's probability like Star Wars given that they like Titanic. So pause the video and see if you can remember how to do these given that ones. Okay, so the way I like to think of it is when it says given that they like Titanic, that means we're looking only at the Titanic people. So not all the people, just the Titanic, okay, which is 120. Okay, and then it's the probability they like stores, Star Wars, given that they like Titanic. So out of the Titanic people, how many like Star Wars? So that's 70 out of the 120. And you could reduce that if you want to 7 twelfths. Okay, so the other one is the reverse. They, they like Titanic given that they like Star Wars. So again, when it, now when it says given that they like Star Wars, right, whatever comes here is the denominator. So given that they like Star Wars means we're now looking at only the people that like Star Wars, which is 100, okay? And so I'll read it one more time. Probability they like Titanic, given that they like Star Wars. So out of the Star Wars people, how many also like Titanic? So out of these 100, how many also like Titanic? That's that 70. So the probability they like Titanic, given that they like Star Wars, is 7 out of 10. Okay, so that's all I got for Chapter 11. Thank you.